Hey hey guys, welcome back to Growing and Crowing. So today I thought I'd talk a little bit about our garden plans for this year. And we're doing a really big revamp. So we have always had a fairly large in-ground garden. And every year, you know, come July, it just gets terrible looking and over overwhelming. So two years ago, I believe, we took half of that garden and turned it into a flight pen for our peacocks and guinea fowl. So you can see those guys here. And just to give you an idea of the full length of what the garden once was, everything's nice and soggy here because a band of rain and actually about pea-sized hail just came through as I was intending on coming out and doing the first part of this video. So here's the size garden that we have now. And while it's smaller and a bit more manageable, um, we still want to try something new. So we were able to locate a farmer who had some old hog feeders down in one of his ditches, you know, ready just to go to the junkyard or whatever. And so I knew I wanted one. We had actually seen it at Magnolia at the silos down in uh, Texas, in Waco, Texas, when we were down there a few years ago. And so I wanted one to plant maybe flowers or something in. Well, when we went down there, I discovered there was seven or eight that were possibly useful. Aaron's like, hey, those might make some pretty good flower beds instead of going and buying all brand new tanks. I love rusty and rustic, so I was all for that. Um, not totally sold on the on the round for the entire thing in the beginning, but it's gonna be unique and we're gonna give it a try. So um, the very first one we saw was this Pride of the Farm. And I was super excited. Knew that was def definitely gonna be the focal point or the centerpiece of the garden. And <clears throat> we actually had a neighbor who had this large round one at the bottom that he had used for his kids swimming pool when they were younger and they're now grown and so they were willing to part with it and sold us that one um the rest of them are all hog feeders and we actually took apart the different sections uh so that we had you know a few extra ones to move around so these are kind of they're just temporarily sat there uh we do have to come in obviously and put dirt in them yet so my plan is to share that pro process with you um some of them are really pretty cool and where, we're, where the little feeder parts are like this you know I might pin a few up and plant some um flowers and that sort of thing but that's all in the in the in the works um so I'm a little bit skeptical on how I feel about not tilling up the dirt and that's just my favorite i love it feels like spring when we till the garden for the first time so i'm a little sad about that however we still do food plots and maybe just maybe we'll actually get some pumpkins planted this year too so so we'll see um there's the flight pen if you're local and familiar we lost a flight pen and all that heavy snow this past january so that among many other things is on our to-do list to clean up. I don't think it's savable, uh, so unfortunately it'll probably just be tore down and that will be a piece of pasture again. So it's, a little, it's sad. Aaron put a lot of work into that many years ago. Um, so I'm thankful though, however, there were no animals in it, no pheasants in it at the time. So that's, so that's good. It's a loss, but it could have been worse. I was able to do a little bit of videoing as we got those hog feeders out of the ditch. So come along with us and see how we brought them home. We did haul our skid steer over there to pull them out because it was such a steep embankment that we would not have been able to pull them out without those tracks. 
Luckily, it wasn't long and our youngest son Chase showed up. Thank goodness because I cannot run a ratchet strap to save my life. I don't know why I cannot understand those things. But it was a lot less pressure on me when he jumped in and helped with that part. Next, we had to get them all strapped down on the trailer so we could start our journey home. We didn't have far to go and was on back roads the whole time, so it wasn't too much of a worry, but just a little bit of a process to get them up on there and all tied down good. Once we got everything home and unloaded, the guys started taking apart the pieces so that we could use the bottom and then the middle section of the ones that weren't too dented up too bad. Then we headed down to the neighbors to get that big circle tank and get that home so we could get it set. Once we had it in the spot where we wanted, we started bringing in firewood to fill up the bottom half. This helps fill some area so you're not using all dirt and it also gives it some ways to drain. We did use to fill the bottom, we had some compost piles from cleaning out the sheep barn so it was full of hay and that sort of thing. So it didn't matter too much, we just needed to fill the area at the bottom. So once we have everything set, we will come back in and put some good black dirt on top and then compost so we have good rich soil to plant in. So um, I did kind of put together a plan of what we're going to plant in them. Um, the one thing I'm not sure and about was doing potatoes in there. So I do have a couple other low boxes to the ground um, in another area that I'll insert a photo here so you can see that. Um, so I think that's where we're going to end up doing our potatoes this year. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. And I did get my Baker's Creek seed order in, so I thought I'd share with you today what all I got for that this year. We did get a couple of free stuff with it when you order so many, uh, so much dollar worth that will send you some free, so we got some free peppers and basil. In the past, we used to start our peppers and tomato seeds uh, by seed under lights and that sort of thing, but we just, don't need that many pepper or tomato plants. So if I had a way to sell those plants or took them to a farmer's market or something, I think that that's a great idea. Or if you wanted a very specific type of tomato or pepper, then of course, you know, starting them by seed is gonna be the best route. But for those, I just honestly go to our local FFA sales and support those kids. And that's where we get um, a lot of our tomatoes and pepper plants and a few other things. So. Um, I couldn't resist doing obviously a few flowers. My biggest goal with the garden is to keep it pretty because if it's pretty, then maybe I'll wanna go out there a little bit more and pull the weeds. So as I'm looking through these seeds, I'm kind of discovering that I ordered a lot more flowers than I really did vegetables. But that's because again, we'll grab those tomatoes and pepper plants uh, locally. So for our seeds, we grabbed some carrots, and I also have behind me here some seeds that we got last year and either never got in the ground or had multiple packets of and just didn't need that many. So they're still good to plant. I can do that this year. Um, I did go ahead and get cilantro. So this is one of those things that I feel like 
we plant and it bolts and it's never ready at the exact same time as the tomatoes are. So I'm hoping that maybe I can kind of time that out a little bit better this year and do a little research on when to start it so it correlates with those tomatoes. Um, we got some lettuce. I do have a couple packs of this, uh, different types of lettuce from last year as well. And I love to do these in the green stock. Um, it's just, it's up off the ground. It keeps it nice and clean. I love that I can just go out there and cut some off for a salad or make a wrap or something like that real quick for lunch. Uh, kohlrabi is something that we have not planted in quite a few years and Aaron likes it. So we thought we'll grab some of that and try that again this year. I'm not sure, honestly, if the kids have ever had that. So that'll be fun <laughs> to let them try that. Uh, zucchini squash, of course, this is one of those things that, you know, it's, it's not there and then it's there and you're trying to give it away to neighbors. But we always have to plant at least one plant in the garden because what's summer without a little bit of zucchini. Cucumbers. Um, so this I'll keep on some sort of a trellis, which will probably be where our garden, where you enter the garden, um, is probably where I'll put these again, because we won't have a trellis system connected to any of those garden beds or hog feeders, hog feeders that are already there. So that's probably where I'll put those. Um, I grabbed some dill, uh, not only for mainly for the butterflies or maybe for pickle making, um, but also just for, you know, pretties if we do some flowers in the house. So the rest of what I have is all flowers. <laughs> Zinnias are probably hands down my favorite flower simply because it blooms all summer long right into fall. There's a ton of variations of them. So those are always an absolute must in, in my garden. Um, so with the hog feeders, there's some areas, uh, you know, underneath where they had where the actually feed came out. So I'm hoping to do some things, uh, you know, down there along the ground that things like the nasturtiums and that kind of stuff that will kind of trail off a little bit. So I'm not sure how many vegetables we'll have down in those little pockets, but definitely some flowers. Um, so petunias are something I've actually never done by seed. So I need to do some looking to see if that's something you can direct sow or if you really have to start it indoors early season. Otherwise I normally, you know, buy those, uh, buy locally for the hanging baskets as well as just the individual flowers that will plant in there for pretty and, you know, kind of have the draped petunias or wave petunias uh, draped off to the sides. Um, and I also try to grab some stuff that's not only good for um, pollinators, but also that was gonna help deter some pests. So the nasturtiums are good for that. Uh, marigolds, I got a couple different kinds. I thought these looked kind of interesting, the Mexican mint marigold. So we'll try those this year. I liked how little and tiny they were. Um, here's a couple, oh, I thought this nasturtium was really pretty cool. That looked neat. So we'll see if I can get that one to grow. Um, there's some more, oh, Cosmos. Those are always good. Kind of has that nostalgic farm feel. Uh, same with some poppies. And actually, I remember my grandma having poppies in her garden and I pulled the little seed head aparts because they were like nice little fluffy pieces and she didn't always love that I did that, but I just remember that as a kid. So um, these are something that I believe they come up every year. I need to look into that. Um, so I, I'll probably put some in those raised garden beds, but we'll see how they go and maybe I can save some seeds from those and put them in a more permanent spot for next year. Um, sunflowers are an absolute must. Um, I usually always do sunflowers right along the fence and that's going to be a hard one to know that I can't plant right in the ground right there. However, I have done a little planting and I think in that very first box that's going to be right behind the fencing, um, I'm going to plant these, I believe it's this, this music box mix. It's, um, a little short variety so it won't hopefully grow super tall we've done those huge mammoth sunflowers before really cool gigantic awesome for the kids but once they're done and they're big they just fall over and they're huge and they just make a big mess <laughs> so don't know that we'll ever do those again but we're gonna try these uh, give these a try this chocolate cherry is another one that I really love it's just unique you know not your standard sunflower this, I think it's calendula. I'm not sure if that's how you say it. I've not ever planted these before. Uh, best I can, um, 
you know, understand is that they're similar to a marigold as far as good to keep those pests out of your garden. So I grabbed some of those seeds. Um, there's a couple other little zinnias. I love this one. It's tiny little flowers and uh, a really cool reddish orange color. So again, those, those zinnias, um, you can save those seeds. And actually here's a jar full of flower heads that I saved from last year. So uh, we'll just take those out and get the seeds out and replant those and that's all you need for your zinnias. A friend of mine introduced me to zinnias many years ago and I've been totally hooked on them ever since. Um, and I grabbed some sweet peas. So this is another one of those, you know, grow up a trellis thing. So we'll see. I have an idea. I think where I'm going to put that, but we'll, uh, we'll see about that. One more thing. One thing we did last year was popcorn. Uh, this was the strawberry popcorn and we actually the first time we've grown popcorn and that actually pops and has been successful so we didn't order any more seed because we could just replant that if we cho choose to um we got a lot out of it so honestly i don't know that i'll plant any this year but we, we may we might wait until next year to do some more of that so um so that is what i have right now and Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed it and we would love if you'd hit that subscribe button and follow along as our garden progresses over the summer.